Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me once again. You're always most welcome. Well, today, as the title somewhat cheekily suggested, we have a couple of little fockers to have a look at. Now, we're not joking now, this is actually a couple of kits that have been loaned to us by our great friend John Fogo, friend of the channel, and he has actually said I can keep this one, which is again very generous of him. I obviously to get a freebie off him, I feel, feel bad about it now. Um, now this is actually an interesting kit because it was actually produced by, and I'm trying to, they call Product 2, I think they were called, in about 1970, 1973, 72 I think it was or thereabouts, and then it was taken up by uh, Matchbox under the Ravel ownership though, not under Matchbox as they originally were. So this was never branded as a Matchbox before this boxing uh, in 1995, so it's quite a, it's quite a strange one. Um, and today we're having a, a double header because we're going to do a comparison, one at a time mind, but we're going to do a comparison with John's pride and joy, his other Fokker D21, but this time it's from Frog and it's in one of the hanging bags, an original. Oh, a real classic. Um, so that's going to be quite interesting and we'll get to that a little bit later. I'll put that back on its hanger and we'll have a look at Matchbox first. Now this, I think the sort of over time, um, although the Frog is much earlier, that goes back to the 60s, but uh, you know that my love of these Matchbox uh, kits is very strong, however under this particular lineage in the mid 90s, early mid 90s, under Ravel, Ravel's ownership with the grun punked on it and this boxing, I, I hate it, I mean this one's a little bit bashed, okay, but I just don't like the boxing, it's not to do with the kit inside, um, they just threw away all the charm that Max Bo Matchbox had got. It's kind of strange isn't it, you know, it's like, uh, we're going to do things our way, you know, and they didn't really learn, in the, much in the way that some of those like Ethics didn't really learn either, they didn't learn that Matchbox took a big chunk out of the market by being clever, innovative, colourful, appealing, you know, um, I mean even the artwork's a bit basic like this really. You know that if that was Roy Huxley that would be a bit more to it than that. But let's have a look at what's inside and see what we think. The real, there is some writing on the side uh, in this very strange and tiny writing that they love at Ravel. It says the Fokker D21 broke completely with the Fokker tradition of biplanes and high wing monoplanes. This model was a low wing aircraft with fixed landing gear. The single seat combat plane was developed by the Dutch Army and had its first flight on the 27th of March 1936. It's pretty warm, obviously. Fitted with a nine cylinder 830 horsepower Bristol Mercury 8 engine. Bristol Mercury 8. Eight, which I think is the same as in the Lysander, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Interesting. Uh, and it goes on, it reached speeds of uh, 460 kilometres at 4,400 metres altitude. Not bad. And it reached, uh, oh sorry, structurally detailed fuselage and wings, movable propeller, whoa, really? <laughs> Four machine guns, detail landing gear, colour transfers for a Dutch version. Okay. So, we just recently had the Formula 1 with a good Dutch win, so all the Dutch fans will be out in the string tonight. And that's our friend George, he's one of the people from Holland, isn't he? The Netherlands, he'll be out. Oh, quite small inside. It is small. Okay. Quite a lot, quite a lot of box, but not a lot of kit. And we've got some mm, typical matchbox from uh, past their best decals. We'll have a quick look at these, because I don't think there's a huge amount to say here. What have we got? We've got some nice... Dutch decals, yeah, the orange of the Netherlands, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's got the damp in it and it's gone a bit nasty, so you're probably not going to use those in trade. Let's have a look at this. I think this has come from John's loft, from what he was telling me. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, you, it says Matchbox, as I say, but you can clearly see it's a Ravel styling. Everything is Ravel style in here, not Matchbox. Um, bum, 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 English, yeah, just the basic instructions really, not very pleasant. On the back we've got the colour call-outs, we'll come to that in a second. Let's have a look at what we've got. And again, it looks very Ravel rather than, oh, I don't know, I don't know, that. it has got like matchbox overtones in the, the styling of the lettering and things. So we've got um, sprue map, which obviously matchbox never did that, so that's completely different to what they did. 
that's definitely Ravel's influence. But then it comes down to a graphics that do look a bit more Matchbox-like. Or would you say they're more Ravel? A bit of both, actually, isn't it? The flavour of it. So you basically got a very basic seat, um, sort of cockpit area, two halves of the fuselage, your Bristol Mercury engine going in there with the, uh, all the cylinders and the uh, propeller, uh, into the cowling, and you've got an intake going in underneath, and then you're attaching that to the fuselage you've just built. Top and bottom wings, very straightforward, very simple. And then, as you might imagine, wings going into the fuselage. Tail planes with support struts, very much, very like the ME109. It was very in vogue in the mid mid 30s German aircraft. And they nearly all had these struts. Obviously, the Stuka had it, the JU87 as well. And then you've got all your your guns going on here, aerials and guns, and gun sight. And then you've got this fixed undercarriage. So again, it hints it again a bit like the Lysander, doesn't it? The undercarriage is very Lysander-like, as is the engine, of course, because it's the same one. Interesting. And it's got, oh, it's got an option for actually, yeah, they give you an option for skids here for, is that for water or for, no, it's an ice, ice plane. It's an ice plane version, because I think Finland used these, didn't they? Yes. So it's for the snow and ice, like skids there as an option, or conventional undercarriage there. And then you get the tail wheel going on, that's kind of it, or tail skid in that case, look. Interesting. And then, unfortunately, it only gives one lot of day, so it doesn't explain why you need skids. So that's another bad, badly conceived bit of instructions from Ravel. Um, as I say, Matchbox were truly long gone when this was made, so Matchbox never had any true involvement, Lesney didn't, in this model at all. Um, it was this other company, and then it went straight to Ravel, and they called it Matchbox. Um, use fine black thread, it says, for your aerial antenna. Okay. Um, one thing I do notice about this aeroplane though, it, look at the influences that it has on the later aircraft, the Fokker Wolf Von 90. Look at the tail shape, look at the wing shape, even the sort of basic sort of plan form of it is very similar. You see it from underneath or above. Very FW190 like, isn't it? Just needs a more powerful engine. Uh, slightly cleaner aerodynamics, which of course the FW190 does get. Well, there we go, that's the instructions. And then we have got a bag. Now I've got a new technique, by the way, to tell you about this. For those of you that are very kindly uh, loaned kits to us, uh, although John says I keep this one, thank you John, it's very kind of you do. Um, but for those of you, um, John's got another one obviously, which he doesn't, he doesn't want me to have, that's got to come back, Mr. Oxley. You better send it back, is what he's thinking. <laughs> Um, he, John doesn't comment on the um, on the live chat because he watches it on TV and it's a nightmare to use the text in, so I fully understand where he's coming from. But um, anyway, I've got a new machine, I've got a little crimping machine so I can heat seal bags, reseal them. So those of you that send me kits, I can now reseal the bag. Quite a good thing. Um, so I, uh, obviously this is going to be for me I guess, so I may, uh, I may reseal this one. So I think we'll just cut that open with a knife and have a look at what is within eyes beneath. There we go. Put with the frog kit there and they use staples and probably just does staple it I think. Because it's an older kit we don't want to spoil it. Oh, I didn't cut it very well did I? My blade got a bit of blood. It's a bit strange. My blade has not done the business there at all. I thought it was quite a new one. Let's try again. That's it, we're in there. Off. It's because uh, obviously the weather here has cooled down from this ferocious heat that we had last week. It was like living on Mars here, it was unbelievable. And, and I know we talked about this, didn't we, in passing about our friends in America and South Africa and Australia just laughing at us, thinking, oh, they're making a big fuss about it. Not, not very hot temperatures. But what you have to remember is that, unlike you know South Africa or America or Australia, this is a very cold and wet country in the UK. Northern Europe is generally. So we build our houses here to be heavily insulated. Heavily insulated. They are built to keep warm in cold winters. Uh, and so they are not designed for hot weather. We don't have air conditioning units. 
and we just can't handle it because our, our enemies normally the cold we're not used to those sort of temperatures so uh, if you thought we were a bit wimpy and a bit a bit lightweight then you have to understand you know we don't have these light wooden houses and aircon systems and anything like that we're in these heavily bricked you see here we've got breeze block it's all there to, to keep us warm you know so when it gets above 30 degrees here we struggle a lot <laughs> anyway without further ado let's have a look at this Cheatsy weetsy sprues it fits in the palm of my hand look at this wow <laughs> gosh this is uh, very small now then can, we see, can you see what I was meaning about this FW190 how it must have influenced it though because you can see that tail is very reminiscent of the FW190 shaping isn't it not that dissimilar at all um, obviously the 190 had a bit a bit more of a bubble canopy but that was that was more of a case of combat requiring a lot more visibility um, yeah it doesn't doesn't really look and feel very matchbox like again you can tell it's not from a matchbox mold this one uh, and it's got it's got very fine raised panel lines don't know if you can see it so far so small I'm going to bring it in zoom in a bit more yeah see it there it's quite nicely moulded. Uh, you've even got the uh, you know the uh, the veins, the uh, the fluting that's on the actual uh, cylinders there for the cooling. That's quite good. No problem with that. Then we have a single clear part, the canopy, which to be fair seems okay. I think of its of its era. That's quite nice actually. It's got some fine. Uh, very finely engraved uh, framework. I'm not sure how well it's picking up on the camera. I think you can do that. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, it's okay. Not bad. Then we've got the wings. This is going to be a short review, I can tell. <laughs> this is very small part count indeed. Then we've got your wings. You've got your bottom wings with the hole in for the undercarriage. And then there's the top wings here. And again, slightly FW190 looking, isn't it? That similar profile. You can see that they were already working on that sort of uh, uh, DNA in the design, you know. And it's got fairly big uh, connecting uh, points here, lugs. Hope that goes together okay. Looks quite nice, though, doesn't it? Really? And then finally, we have got everything else on one sprue. Uh, and we've got one part that's about to leave it any second. I know it is. So we're going to have to be pretty gentle here, I think. It looks like it's about to come off this top one here. It's the bottom of the cockpit floor. And then you've got your propeller. I've got to say there's a bit of flash on this. You'd never see on a matchbox, a true matchbox kit like that. It's pretty flashy. Getting a bit closer. There we go. See that? Um, yeah, I mean, it looks to me like an early frog in some respects. The, the moulding is clearly not matchbox. That's absolutely obvious. Um, but it's quite nice, the shapes are good, it looks quite, you know, a bit of effort has gone into the actual uh, design. And then you can see you've got your tail planes there, and your skids, and you've got your cannons here, guns. Yeah, that's very nice. Very, very interesting. Now, there's also a seat there, isn't there? Now why don't we do a bit of a comparison then and have a look at this frog being careful not to mix them up of course that is more than my life is worth Mr Frogo would not be happy with me so let's be very careful and put that over there to one side and let's do a back to back on this one we'll go to our little hanger bag um, presentation bag it looks very nice and I can tell you that the uh, the day cars in this are in much better condition now I've got to be careful because this is John's own Pride and joy, uh, and the way he described it, I think he's quite quite pleased with this one. So we've got to be very very careful how we are going to extract this. So bear with me one second. It's going to be a staple removal job. Uh, that's not as easy as it sounds because where to put them? Got to be very very careful. Sorry, I'm just zooming out so you can see what's going on. Don't any green screen, do we? Okay, so 
You'll notice that I've sobered up, by the way, since my last uh, slightly disastrous Keith Floyd style appearance uh, after the million views. Yes, yes, some of that was about as successful as one of Keith Floyd's uh, meals being cooked, like when he did the baked cod. Any of you that are experts on Keith Floyd, he went to uh, Spain and he did baked cod in uh, salted cod. He baked in salt and he made a terrible, terrible error and he left it in too long and it just became still, still in the deep in this pan of uh, sea salt. And uh, in fact, it was bream, I think, not cod. And he just overcooked it, and it was just like totally solid, no more moisture destroyed. You know, and he went, oh, and he said, this is that's the difference between me and the modern chefs who cooks on TV. He said they just say cut and start again. He said, oh, we're not doing that. <laughs> and he said, you can't win them all. And he showed it, and he just sort of binned it at the side, and they went on, moved on to another another meal. <laughs> You'd never get that today. That's one of the things I liked about him. It's a bit like modelling. If you can show your failures, and I know a lot of, a lot, a lot of people that are, I follow in modelling do do, in fairness. One or two won't do that because they don't need to know that they fail. But I think it's interesting, actually, if you fail because you learn from it. You always learn from it. Anyway, I'm digressing. Talking about Keith Floyd. But it was a bit of a... Well, my dro broken champagne glass being dropped and well, a bit of a train crash, wasn't it, really? <laughs> anyway, we're all sober today, don't worry. No champagne. Now then, what have we got here? So, it's the fucker D21. This lovely hanger, which I've now managed to carefully remove, so we can have a proper look. So, artwork looks pretty much identical. It's actually got a very similar number um, in the Dutch Air Force. On the back, we've got this nice colour call-out card with the decals on. And we have the the Finnish swastika, because of course Finland had the swastika um, and used it prior to, I think prior to the Nazis using it, I think. Perhaps anybody knows the, uh, the history there. But um, obviously there's no problem with it. It's a blue swastika on a white background. And that's the Finnish Air Force. And this is June 1941, so I'm not sure actually whether it is prior or not. Or whether it was influenced by them. I'm not so sure. And then you've got the... Um, so it's the um, Finnish Air Force, 941 Fighter Squadron, or you've got the first fighter group of the Netherlands Air Force at D. Coup, 39 to 41. So this is basically at the outbreak of war. And then, of course, after they've actually been taken over by the Germans, of course, because they were overrun in May 1940. So this covers before and after the Germans actually took control of the country. Uh, and I presume the Germans may have put their own insignia on these aircraft later. Made in Great Britain, of course. Um, as we know, um, I should explain. This is a this is quite an old kit. This is one of the reasons that we have to be a little bit doubly careful with it. Uh, this one it dates from 1963, uh, but this version, this this hanger, is actually 1972, I believe. 72, 73 hanger style, particular iteration. So let's have a look. Again, it's not going to have very many parts, very similar, I think, to the Matchbox. If it's the same kit, I wouldn't be entirely surprised inside. It might just be, you know, but we'll see. We'll see. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? You can see how they were mold sharing back in the 60s and 70s. So what we got, yep, looks awfully similar, doesn't it? We've got the same looking seat, um, but we have, no, because it's not the same, because we haven't got the cockpit floor in this one. Okay. He just has a seat that sits on like a ledge within the actual side of the uh, fuselage. Then you've got separate rudder, okay so another difference here, separate rudder going on, that's another good thing. Then you've got your tailplanes and your wings. Interestingly it doesn't show the wings being put together, are they solid? Is it a solid wing? Nope. Nope, they are two part wings but... Oh, it's, no, this is my fault, I'm going the wrong order. Ignore me, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe I am still drunk. Um, yeah, so you're building up your uh, uh, Bristol Mercury engine here. Then you put your wings together and your tailplanes together there. And you've got ailerons in this one. Okay, that's good. Separate ailerons, look. So Frog have scored again there. And as we said, you've definitely got a separate rudder. So another bonus point for them. And then you have got nice undercarriage. Uh, there's no ski option on this one. 
which kind of surprises me because it's one of its. This is actually for Finland and it doesn't have a ski option. But anyway, uh, and then you get your guns going in there, and then finally your tailwheel and of course your canopy. So that's quite nice. It does roads well. This doesn't it? it looks quite promising. So we've got our decals, we mustn't mix these kits up, we must not do that under any circumstances. Here's our Dutch markings, and then we have these Finnish markings, not Nazi swastika as I stress, this is Finland. They just had a similar emblem at the time. If anybody knows the history of that emblem in the fin hands of Finland, I'd be very interested to know. Did they copy the Nazis or did they have it already? Not quite sure. Anyway, let's have a look at the kit itself. Zoom you back. Try and get it out of the bag very carefully for John. See what we got. So, it does look awfully similar. I'm just doing a little comparison. Uh, of course, it's not the same because I say we have ailerons cut out here. So, it's not the same. And there are more sprues. There's actually lots of little sprues on this one. Oh, yes, there's a lot of parts. Quite a few are off sprue. But let's zoom in and have a look at this. So here we've got again this uh, fuselage, but this time we have no rudder built in, we've got a separate rudder at the back. And we have got, it's quite big, again, quite big connecting plugs. Ooh, some nasty sink marks there. Can you see that? A bit of a hideous sink mark here. Here, see it? There. Sink mark, nasty. And there, <laughs> nasty. That's not so good. And another one here. Oh, frog, you're losing points. You're doing so well. Can you see it there? Camera's not picking it up. It's actually on the line there. On this line. See that? There it is. I think you got it. And it's same on the other side as well. Opposite side. Yeah, there. So there's a few sink marks. Um, detail feels a bit finer, though, if anything. Hmm, seems to go together okay. And then we have our, uh, our wings, complete with ailerons. Let's have a look how that goes. There you go, that goes together quite nicely, doesn't it? Got some almost building it, aren't I? Where's the glue? Oh, no, no, don't do that. I'm in trouble. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's when there's another set of wings, obviously we don't need to see those as well. Then we've got our cockpit, and we have a little bit more, perhaps a bit more finesse on this one. A little bit more detail with the framing, I think. See that? Yeah, that's quite nice. Slightly nicer than the Matchbox version. Or Revel, I should say. Then we have our undercarriage and our elevators at the back, which are separate, which again is nice. I think this is going to beat the Matchbox. I think it's inevitable, actually. Because I don't think it's really a Matchbox, that's why. <laughs> and then we've got our... Uh, tail planes and again they're split they're upper and lower on the other kit they were all one piece so that's nicer again this is quite nicely detailed you know it's nicely moulded you know, it's quite good uh, panel lining raised panel lines in this case on the rudder looks good there and then we've got Odea we have a problem, uh, I, I suspect John knows this already, but the prop, one of its blades is off, unfortunately, it's loose in the bag. Here it is. There, goes there. So, sorry about that, but that wasn't my doing, I'm afraid. It's, uh, and then we have the perennial frog problem. Look at the flash. Oh my God. That is a lot of flash here, and on the wheel, there. Yes, this is what I remember a frog, you see, when I used to be a bit, a bit down about them. And then last but not least, we've got our ailerons, but again, they've done, see these parts seem to be free of, well, not quite free perhaps, most of the parts are free of flash. You just get them cropping up like at the end of those cylinders, don't you? And then, turn it the way up, there's the little man, he was a very indistinct Mr. Blobby almost, you know, a bit melted looking. <laughs> but the ailerons are nice, aren't they? Those are really crisp. Oh, that's interesting. Well, 
Well, we have a two header of what we can, can innocently call little fuckers. Um, so what do we think about that? I've got to be honest and say uh, I don't think they're in the sort of eight and a half, nine out of ten region, but I, I think well, the frog's pretty good for its for its era. You know, I think that's probably an eight and a half. It's just a flash, isn't it? it spoils it. That's all. Other than that, it's really great. It's more options, it's more detail. You've got rudder, ailerons all working, and you don't get that with the matchbox. So I think I'm going to give the matchbox eight, and the frog eight and a half. I think that's kind of fair. Kind of fair, really. Um, you could argue even the matchbox might be seven and a half, seven, seven, you know. High sevens to an eight, and, and it's definitely an eight and a half for the frog. I think that's fair. Anyway, what do you think? Uh, I've got to make sure I put these all back in the right bags and I don't cross contaminate the two kits. Don't worry, John. I won't. I'll, I'll sort it for you. Very interesting kits indeed. And that frog, again, uh, if you ignore the flash, it's absolutely superb, quite frankly. Uh, and again, subverting my expectations, you know. I see them in little bags or blister packs and I'm, I just groan. Oh no, it's going to be absolute garbage. But they're not. They're not. Uh, and this one that's masquerading as a matchbox, but has never seen matchbox or Lesney ever. Uh, absolutely no connection with Matchbox other than the, the branding on the front. It's a good kit, it's still a nice kit, uh, but it's much simpler. Um, and obviously, I, it was, I don't think it was run for very long, I think Revell dropped it again in 2000 or 2001. So they only run it for about five years. Um, but not, not up to the standard of a normal Matchbox, I think. Um, and certainly not as good as the frog, so there we go. So, so I'm going to say that's eight for the matchbox, eight and a half for the frog. Um, and the, the frog might have got nine if it hadn't got the flash all over it. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you'll give me ten out of ten. And remember to smash that like button. Don't forget, if you're not a subscriber and you enjoyed this, please do subscribe. It costs you nothing. So you need to uh, ding the subscribe bell. And if you are a subscriber, ding that notification bell. Make sure it's checked. Because, as I said recently, there's been cases where uh, YouTube seems to have reset everything and a lot of people think that they are subscribed and then find that one of our shows is already underway because YouTube have taken it upon themselves to, to uncheck everything. I don't know why. Not my, not my doing. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. I thought it was interesting to see another one of these real classic kits, you know. And uh, hopefully um, perhaps one or two of you might come forth with one or two more because, uh, as I say, I can now seal your bags so we can reseal the bag. Uh, but I'm going to go and very carefully restaple this one for John. And thank you very much to you, John, both for the kit that you've very generously donated and the one you've loaned us. It's definitely worth seeing. <laughs> a real cracker. Uh, I say, less flash and it's a 9 out of 10, that's sure. Thanks very much, John. Uh, I think we all owe you a beer again. <laughs> thanks very much for watching, everybody. I hope you'll stay safe and stay well. Until next time, thanks a lot and bye for now.